ओके लेट्स कंटिन्यू सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी एसेंशियली लुक्ड एट द पोल्स एंड जीरोस इन द कॉमन सोर्स एंड आई अगेन वांट टू रिकैप द रिजल्ट अगेन सो लेट मी क्विकली ड्रॉ दैट सो वी हैड एन आर एस एंड कैपेसिटेंस ई वन the trans conductance and at the output side we had an output resistance let's say conductance is g not capacitance e not so here in this case what was the pole locations in this circuit what were the pole locations when i don't consider coupling between the two yeah it is isolated rc section so it's trivial to write like this now uh, a more non trivial case is where you consider the coupling capacitance between the two rc sections let me call that c so here we notice that it is not trivial to write so we actually had to compute the polynomial i mean the uh, transfer function and find the roots but then we made sense of why those roots make sense and we uh, saw that at the input side this capacitance c can be translated to an equivalent capacitance with a value of c into the 1 plus gain of this fellow and at low frequencies we saw that the gain is approximately gm times r0 right so which means at low frequencies which uh, which will give you the low frequency pole what is the total capacitance at this node what is it c1 plus this capacitance multiplied by the gain So C into one plus G M one R not, and the conductance at this node is what? Only yeah, conductance is G S, resistance is R S. So that gives the approximate expression for the low frequency pole. Now similarly, we looked at why the high frequency pole makes sense, and for that we basically looked at the total capacitance at this node, and the total conductance at that node. and uh, again the uh, deal we did was for high frequencies we ignored rs in comparison to c1 because you know c1 will offer a much lower impedance than r1 rs so if you ignore this then it becomes simple the total capacitance at this node is c0 in parallel with c and c1 in series so the total capacitance is c0 plus c c1 by c plus c1 and if you write the total conductance you have this conductance g not the output resistance that will definitely come and in parallel to that we saw this trans conductance put in feedback also contributes to an equivalent resistance and that you can quickly see if i apply a test voltage here what will be the fraction of the voltage appearing there yeah it is a capacitive division c by c plus c1 so gm times this voltage will be the current drawn that will give rise to an uh, equivalent resistance or conductance so the conductance is gm 1 times c by c plus c that's why uh, these two pole locations made sense and we also saw that to start with when i didn't have this capacitance c and if we assume uh, gs g not c1 c not or all of or all of similar order just an assumption then these two poles might be close enough to each other but the moment i added an additional capacitance it looks like one pole has shifted to a low frequency this is the low frequency pole and the other pole seems to have drifted to a higher frequency and this is what we uh, typically call as pole splitting and we'll come to this again later in the course so any uh, clarifications on this why these pole locations make sense and stuff okay. okay cool then let's move on so we have done common drain common source we did common gate will be an exercise so that wraps up the single transistor stages so then let's start attacking the main amplifier the five transistor ota let me quickly draw the schematic here Yeah. So you have an isolated capacitance and a resistance. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Oh, I mean, if you, that's essentially boils down to the question that if you have something like this, what might be the pole location here? Correct? I mean, it's isolated means there is something happening, but whatever, I mean, if you, even if you short the capacitance or open the capacitance, this doesn't get affected. So, here for this RC section, are you okay that the pole location is 1 by RC? Uh, or no? I mean, the way to think is, let us say you apply, let us say assume that the capacitor has an initial voltage. Right, how will the capacitor voltage change with time now? Let us say R and C. This capacitor has some initial voltage, say uh, V naught. And if I want to find Vc of t, how will that change? Yeah, so it is let us say V naught into 1 uh, e power minus t by Rc. Correct? And again, if you write the, uh, this is, I mean, or other way to see is, let us say you find the impulse response of this fellow. You push in an impulse current and try to find the voltage. That will also have the same effect. So it will be 1 by C e power minus T by tau. So this is the impulse response. So you find the transfer function, you have 1 by 1 plus no, S plus 1 by tau will have. Right? And tau is 1 by RC. Right? Yeah, I mean the assumption is pole is all on the left half of S plane. So I mean basically, I mean when I write here. The poles are all in the poles are all in the left half of S plane. I don't explicitly write the negative sign because the default transfer function we have is of this form one plus S by P one and so on. Right? This is the standard form for transfer function I am assuming. So which means by default poles are assumed to be in the left half of S plane. So the value of P one will be positive. And uh, uh, the current is uh, the current is like an impulse. Or it's an impulse. I mean it's a thought process. It's an impulse current. So if you are confused, we can discuss at the end. Okay. So let us look at the 5 transistor OTA now. So let me quickly draw that. Again, this is the self biasing. Let me draw the a small signal picture. So the supply I'll short it, the bias voltage I'll short, and all the okay. I'll start with finding the poles. So which means I don't care what the input is and what the output is. I'll start to lump all the capacitors at each node. At the output, let us say I have a load capacitor that the OTA is driving. And along with this load capacitor, you can also club the capacitance from drain to gate of this transistor, right? Drain to bulk of the transistor, similarly drain to bulk of the PMOS transistor and so on. That you can you know, think and see what all capacitors will be lumped here. Similarly, at this node, you will have an effective capacitance. So let me call that CX. Again, this will include the uh, source to gate capacitance of the NMOS transistors because gates are all incrementally short and even the drain to gate capacitance of this NMOS transistor and every other combination right? that you can think and see again what capacitors will come and once again from this node you will have another capacitor to ground let me call that C3 So in addition, you will also have a capacitance from the gate to drain of this transistor. But I will ignore that uh, CGD for now because the moment you include this fellow, uh, it introduces coupling between these two parts. It becomes non-trivial. So I will not consider this for now. So that is the first assumption I will make that CGD is ignored here. Cool. So let us try to find how many poles we will have. So how many poles we will have here? How many poles? Three poles. You can remember you can initialize the voltage across all three capacitors independently without any contradiction. So we definitely have three poles. 
again to find the pole location i'll make the assumption that the poles are apart poles, poles are far apart right and i'll also assume that the load capacitance is much much greater than the other capacitance this is something reasonable to make because this ota might be driving another stage or another load capacitance that typically might be much larger than the parasitic capacitance that you have. okay cool so now that i have made the assumption that uh, poles are far apart and capacitances are all greater we can try to approximate the pole locations as 1 by resistance times the capacitance right so that's why we are making this so uh, yeah so now based on this assumption tell me which capacitor will contribute to the low frequency pole c cl fine and if i want to find the low frequency pole due to cl so let's say the capacitance is cl what will i do to the other two capacitors huh? you open it right again the same experiment i am starting from very low frequency as you keep increasing frequency cl will start to deviate from its open circuit behavior <coughs> at that frequency these two fellows can be treated as open so i'll say that here c3 and cx are open so i just have to find the equivalent resistance looking here and what is the equivalent resistance looking here i mean this capacitors are not there now yeah what is the equivalent resistance yeah okay uh, since i have not marked transistors it is r not of the n mos in parallel to r not of p mos so i'll write it in the terms of conductance gds of n plus the gds of p okay. so that's the low frequency pole now we will have two more poles no again uh, think think of it like this i keep increasing frequency now after some point these two fellows might start to deviate from their open circuit behavior but i do not know the relative values of c3 cx so which means i can't treat the capacitors in isolation i have to consider them together but one thing is for sure when i'm considering the effect due to these two capacitors what can i say about cl cl is short that much i can say so i'll write it here this i'll approximate for writing these i'll assume cl is short I am going to go and short CL here. And now I have to consider both the capacitors together. I can't, you know, uh, isolate them, or I can't treat them uh, separately. But here is where I would like to make the following observation. Let me make some space here. Okay. So let us say. Uh, i look at the equivalent resistance looking from this node right let us say i open this capacitor see the capacitance c3 is zero what can you say about the looking in resistance here 1 by gm of the nmos again this is 1 by gm provided the drain is at a smaller resistance and what is the resistance here that's also of 1 by gm into something so it's a smaller resistance so here you can approximately say that this is 1 by gm of the nmos when c3 is 0 now let's also take a case where i short c3 that is i make c3 to be infinite mm. if i make c3 infinity what will be the resistance now hmm? it is still 1 by gm again drain is at a much smaller resistance now now this is exactly 1 by gm so that the point i am making is irrespective of whether c3 is open or short this doesn't seem to affect the resistance seen by cx right so in both these conditions this is not changing right now similarly if i find the resistance looking into c3 and i find that this resistance this resistance does not change whether cx or cx is open or short then i can say that the two rc sections here are not coupled right i'm not giving a strict definition but i guess the point is conveyed right if i'm opening or shorting a capacitor if that doesn't impact the other capacitance then i can ho hopefully consider them to be not coupled right so now let's uh, try to find that resistance 
this is then seen by C3 when I open and short CX. So let's say open CX. I'm finding the resistance looking into this node. Okay, I'll even remove capacitance now here. This capacitance is there, but I'm trying to find the resistance looking into this node. And what was that? How much is the resistance looking here? What is the resistance we computed for the 5 transistor OT earlier? So, hmm? uh -huh. I mean, okay, if you, you apply a test voltage here, this will draw current of GMP times V test. We will ignore the current drawn by R0 in comparison to the GM current. But uh, if you recollect, this also meant the same test voltage is applied to this PMOS transistor. So some current will be drawn by this fellow, that is also GMP times V test. Now, in a normal, in the earlier case, a portion of this current would have come here and contributed to, contributed to the test current here. But if I short the output, what will happen to this current? It will exactly, it will completely flow to the short circuit and no part of this current reaches here. Okay. Is clear? So what is the equivalent resistance now? 1 by GM of the PMOS transistor. Again, this is under the condition that I am shorting the output here. In the earlier experiment, I mean, if you uh, few classes back, we computed the impedance looking into each node, and there this was not short. Then a portion of this current will definitely flow here, contributing to the output resistance or the equivalent resistance. Whereas here it is one by gm. Okay, so this is one by gm. Uh, that do I write? Okay, let's say this is one by gm. This is when C three is open. Now let us say a short C3, sorry, short CX. If I short this fellow, this is ground. What is the resistance looking? Still 1 by GM. I mean, this is incrementally ground, right? So now looking up, we have 1 by GM. Looking down, we have R0. Approximately, it is still 1 by GM of the PMOS transistor. So the resistance seen by C3 seems like it's not changing whether I open or short CX. This is true even for CX0 or infinity. Okay. So which means now I can safely say that the two RC sections are not so coupled. So I can again treat them as isolated RC sections. So write the pole locations as the capacitance there times the equivalent resistance there. And so, so now let's do that. So let us say, uh, let's find the pole due to C3. What is the equivalent resistance in here? 1 by GMP. So the pole location will be GMP by C3. Then. Now let's look at uh, the pole due to CX. What is the resistance uh, seen this side? This is 1 by gm n. And you also have another thing here. What is the resistance seen here? That is also 1 by gm of this NMOS transistor because this drain is short. Right? So what is the equivalent resistance now? 1 by 2 gm. So the total, I mean the pole location is 2 times the gm of the NMOS by CX. Okay. 